Hello, I am Dustin Goes to Hollywood. Welcoming smile. <laughs> and this is the Silver Linings Playlist. We are a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. See? How okay, many... Don't, don't, no. We're not going to get into this whole, oh, I did the intro <laughs> right, oh, do, 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 thing again. If you are new to our show, thank you for joining us, first of all. Second of all, the uh, what we do here is we like to watch movies that have weird endings, sad endings, downright fucked up endings. And we are the purveyors of truth and honesty in terms of we find the good in the bad. We are the people digging for a needle in a haystack to find a glimmer of hope at the end of the movie. Something you could walk away with saying, well, it, it's not all bad. That happened. So that was good. Uh, we're not good at it. Uh, Horrible. As, as evidenced by previous episodes. Uh this one, as usual, not uh, not an easy one, but it's, it's not not terribly difficult. Um, uh, you can speak t- for your goddamn self. I'm coming in guns a blazing. <laughs> you can tell by the episode title that this week we are talking about the movie Frank uh, from the year 2014. A very peculiar and odd movie. A little sleeper hit that's got a cult following. You forgot the word perfect. So Frank, uh, I saw it probably the year it came out. If I remember correctly, I was just starting film school. Um, I of course just watching the trailer, you got to be your interest has got to be somewhat peaked just by the paper mache head alone. Um, and we'll talk about the trailer when we get there. But I mean, it's that that's what why that's why the poster just has that paper mache head on it. It, it sells the movie. You want to see well what's what's under that head, what's going on there, and uh, that's I really enjoyed it. I it. Was about what I expected in terms of a movie. I'm, I was surprised to find out that Frank wasn't really the protagonist. But uh, I remember walking away being like, that's a fun movie. And I'm kind of glad you picked it because I haven't rewatched it since I initially saw it. And it was a fun little rewatch. Mallory, yeah. what was your uh, first time you saw it? Because this was your pick. Yeah, it was my pick. And I kind of had to fight you on it. <laughs> yeah, but a little bit. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I saw this um, as usual in theaters when it came out. Um, and yeah, I saw the trailer and was immediately hooked. Um, cause one of my good friends was a really big Daniel Johnston fan. Mm-hmm. Um, which is, I think, I feel like he kind of influenced the character a little bit. Um, but he was also a big fan of, um, Frank Sidebottom, mm-hmm. Chris, or what's Chris CV, I think is his real name, but that was like a character he did and obviously a big influence on this. So like after I saw that trailer, I was hooked, and plus I love Michael Fassbender and Domhol Gleeson, whatever the fuck his name is. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I think it's Domhol. Okay, sure. Um, um, but yeah, I was, just the moment I saw the trailer, I was like, I'm fucking in for this. Is this? And plus, I mean, you and I are both um, former, like, we've both played in bands, done mm-hmm. all that stuff, so I think that immediately was a thing for us. We're like, oh, a movie about music. Oh, Is this oh. the second or third Fassbender f- movie we've done? Because we did Shame. Um, this Shame. I think I that's think it. that's it. Okay. I just wanted to make sure for my my tally. Um, so uh, we are actually joined by two guests uh, on this episode. Uh, Mally, do you want to introduce them? Uh, no, yeah. We have two guests with us, um, Sebastian and Alesso. Say hi, guys. What's up? How's it going? Um, so guys, what was, we'll start with Sebastian because he is the closest to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so what was your first experience with this movie? Like your relationship going into it? So I can't exactly remember how, um, I came across it, like how I found it, but I was, uh, browsing some sort of list of movies and for some reason the name really caught my eye. Like it, it was really simple. Uh, but I just decided to look into it and I looked at the trailer and it was I was immediately hooked by all the music stuff that I saw because I am a musician, and uh, it seemed like a really fun movie. Um, I am also a huge fan of Fast Bender and pretty much everybody involved in the movie. I uh, didn't really know any anything about the director or anything. I wasn't really into all that at that point in time, but I decided to give it a watch, and I was very pleasantly surprised. Uh, I very much enjoyed it the first time. Alesso. I've seen this movie four times, and the first time I, I think s- f- f- three of those times were this week. Uh, <laughs> two of those times. No, <laughs> actually, I've seen this movie five times because I re- kind of rewatched it today. You did. 
yeah, yeah, just so our listeners know, Alesso spent a better part of this afternoon going through the film and just taking out sound bites for no reason. <laughs> I mean, that, that, yeah. That bite, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, first time you saw this movie. Um, I saw the trailer. It didn't really call my attention because usually I feel that m- music movies are really bad. Like, it's really hard for music, like pe- movies about music to be really good. So I watched it eventually and loved it. I thought they made it like amazingly and every rewatch, it just gets better and better and I, better. I agree. Definitely. I agree. Um, Such a quotable movie. Oh, and we've done nothing. We watched this movie, what, like two or three days ago for yeah. this episode, and we've literally been pretty much speaking in quotes from it for the past three days. <laughs> it's been aggressively annoying, yeah, but amazing. <laughs> uh, um, it's interesting you mentioned move, doing movies about music. Uh, it's kind of difficult. And I agree. I think it's the the way to do it and the way we've seen past movies succeed in doing it is to focus on if it's a nonfiction character, focus on that specific musician. Like, you know, we've got essentially Eight Mile, which is basically Eminem's, you know, movie, and its focus is just on him. Uh, coming out pretty American soon. American classic, I will might add. <laughs> I, I will go to bad for Eight yeah. Mile. I love it. Um, oh, without a doubt. Uh, the Bohemian Rhapsody, the movie about Freddie Mercury coming out this year, uh, I've, I've seen it, and it's fucking great. And it's interesting they choose to go with just Freddie instead of focusing on all the band members collectively. Oh, I'm Dustin. I live in LA. Yeah. I'm you know what? I'm going to name drop off. as much as possible. I don't, I'm not one of these people that are going <laughs> to hold back. Um, You're like the Val Kilmer of podcasting. <laughs> I, I can't just really name think. Drop, name drop. Name drop. I can't really think of a fictitious band <laughs> movie that has succeeded. or that Almost famous. I can't even remember. Almost Famous is probably that and maybe This is Spinal Tap. Like, that's pretty much it, right? Uh, sure. Yeah, so it's 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 weird that they, like, it, it, that's that's kind of how you divide the line, I think. That's how you make a good music-based movie. Because then you also have the movies that take that the total opposite and do, like, Inside Lewin Davis, which is not a bad movie, but it's not nearly as recognizable and highly regarded as, like, these other uh musicians on the rise to fame kind of movies okay (laughs) yeah um i thought that was interesting i'm sorry so (laughs) since we've talked about the trailer so much do you want to listen to it Uh, sure why not i say tell everyone everything why cover anything up right how to describe frank One, two, three, four. Well, there's the head, of course. He never takes it off. You think it's weird? Would it help if I said my facial expressions out loud? Welcoming smile. Delighted look. But what goes on inside the head, inside that head? I find this inspiring. Is music. Something is pressing something is. Frank, people should know about you. You should be famous. Flattered grin. Followed by a bashful half smile. Stop saying your facial expressions out loud. It's extremely annoying. We've been offered a really important gig, South by Southwest, in Texas. People are interested in us. We could be big. What game are you playing? Filling Frank's head with these ideas. I can't hear you over the sound of the bubbles. Someone needs to punch you in the face. Here we go. It's going to be huge. you got to come see us tomorrow night. I promise we'll be bad Frank's not okay. Frank, come back! With all his issues, 100% sanest cat I've ever met. Okay. The head. Take it off. I have a certificate. Take it off! Here it is. My most likable song ever. Coca-Cola, lipstick ring, go dance all night, dance all night. Kiss me, just kiss me, kiss me, Nephrodite. This is your most likable song ever? (laughs) Yeah. People will love it. I think the trailer is great. I think the rhythm is really nice. The editing is on point. Everything's kind of snappy and 
it just flows perfectly with the music. You get the full kind of story from A to B without all the uh, you don't you don't get all the funny parts, all the nuances that you will in the movie. So they held back pretty well. See, I feel like it does ha- include a lot of some of the best jokes. It's, it has a lot of good, a lot of the jokes in it, but I think they hold back on some of them. It has Frank's most likable song ever. Yeah, yeah. that that's <laughs> such that that song has been on repeat in this apartment for the past few days. We should definitely drop that in somewhere in in this episode. Maybe that's how we close out this week. <laughs> Bet <laughs> we do have the soundboard ready to go. <laughs> Yeah, just, it's doable. I know I mentioned Alesso spent a good part of this afternoon um, ripping sound clips from the movie. He has then programmed them onto a little board so he can call them and play them at any moment he wishes. <laughs> we, we definitely need a soundboard for this show and make make editing, first of all, a lot easier. But uh, yeah, <laughs> well, uh, is there anything else we want to talk about the are. trailer? I just want to give some backstory on the movie before we get into it. Unless no, anybody else has some have, thoughts. Sebi, do you have anything to say about the trailer? Um... No, I think it was pretty unimaginable. All right. Uh, backstory in the movie, Dustin. Go for it. So, yeah, like we mentioned, of course, the movie's name uh, is based on the titular character Frank. The year is 2014. Director is Lenny Abra- Abrahamson. Uh, I probably didn't pronounce that right, but it's interesting. His no next, idea. His follow-up to this was the the movie Room, which... Which is incredible. It's a great movie and no total... Idea. That's, that's water- based on a true story, right? Yes. And a, so, a total, yeah. like switch in tone oh complete 180 and, from this movie. and nails it so i'm glad he didn't get typecasted as like these these quirky indie directors um starring michael fosbender maggie gyllenhaal domo gleason scoop mcnary and tess harper um i gotta say i love scoop mcnary and i think he's like silently kind of taking over um oh, he is underrated yeah he's like, i want i want to see him in a leading role he just got added on to the swelling cast of once upon a time in hollywood uh, this past week, so massive he's cast, probably a minor part, but still, it'd be exciting to see. I like, I like him. He gets good work in. Um, budget of a million dollars, only managed to gross that amount worldwide. Kind of broke even, uh, but sports a ninety two percent fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, honestly, like too low. <laughs> yeah, honestly, too low. This Give it a hundred. Perfect. It's, it's, it's. I cannot find a flaw in this movie. I, I, you know what? Let's let's jump. Justin, no, Justin. no, 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 no. I, I was gonna, Boy. I was gonna back you up. I wanted to jump into the movie and say, once th- I don't have many notes on this movie, but one thing I do like uh, about it is that there's no love story. Like, there's no way to distract you from the the goal. There's the a plot. I hadn't and, thought about that. And we pretty much stick straight to the a plot throughout the whole movie, and it's yeah. such a good plot that it manages to hold your interest for ninety minutes. I think I think it's interesting because you were talking about how it, it's hard to pull off a good music movie, and I think the reason why they managed to do with this one is because it's it's a movie by musicians for musicians. So exactly. it's a story about music and what it represents to each of the characters and you know, what how they go about expressing themselves through it. And mm-hmm. and that very much like you can tell by, by little gestures that we keep repeating and quoting oh, yeah. all the time. Uh, that this was a movie made by musicians. They're just very, mm-hmm. uh, very nuanced things that on first watches I didn't even catch. Uh, just by watching it with these two guys, there's a lot more things that we noticed. Um, that had to do with the process of making music. Uh, that we were just laughing our asses off because yeah. it was like, oh, we've done that so many times, and it probably looks just as ridiculous, but it's such an important part of like the, the whole field recording part. Where they <laughs> oh haven't even God. begun to be, <laughs> to actually do the music, and they have already like recorded them jumping on grass. Like the amount, like okay, I hang out with these two quite a bit, <laughs> and they are both avid producers, recording artists, musicians, what have you. The amount of times some random noise will happen, and one of them will go, "Oh my God, I need to sample that." Rund grabs a recorder and just starts recording <laughs> random noises around the world is like it, it at least guaranteed to happen at least once a day. I mean, that's how um, you do it, right? You got to build your <laughs> library up. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, that scene of them just like 
going around recording weird shit is just so spot on. It's insane. When they enter the room and he does the impulse response thing, that's a thing my teacher used to do, dude. Like, yeah, that's, the impulse response. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like, every time he would go into the room. Yeah, that's that's such a thing that I, I wouldn't even have caught if Alessa didn't mention it. It's, it's very so in the background. It's super short, but it's so important because that's exactly what a musician is thinking, thinking when he's coming into a room. It's like, I need to check the acoustics of it to see how it's going to sound or going to record an album here it's immediately important and that's so uh second nature when you do this kind of thing that you don't even think about it and i love that they threw so much of that in there it makes it feel very genuine and you know i could tell you the the idea of like finding uh inspiration everywhere gets the, the biggest uh laugh in the movie for me was in reference to that with the uh the toothbrushes when they're when they're all up to the microphone, <laughs> and there's that VO from Donald Gleason saying Frank looks, uh, Frank finds inspiration in everything, and he just says, "I find this inspiring." <laughs> I got, <laughs> that was the biggest laugh for me in the movie. I thought it was hilarious and like spot on for that character in that montage. It was perfect. Like the editing love- in this movie is just flawless for for jokes like that. Absolutely, I loved when they sampled the scream. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mally, I wanted to yeah. bring this up. Real early, um, yeah, because it was kind of a bit of a point of contention between us. But uh, you, this was on our list to do for a while. Yes, um, I don't remember why it was added to the list, but because I specifically requested it. Yes, I think that was. I, I think you're I right. I was on a rewatch and was like, "Dude, we're doing Frank." And you're like, "I guess." I think you were right. Um. I I texted you after I finished rewatching it, and I was like, you know what? I don't know if if this movie necessarily qualifies, and I you know there could be a listener or two out there that tunes into the episode that might think the same way. And you said, oh no, it's it definitely is. So before you know, we jump the gun into the ending, which we'll get to eventually. I do want to know, like, how do you uh, how do you view the end of this movie? Because I think it's kind of like how we did our La La Land episode, where a lot of people saw that movie and thought. Why are you doing that when that movie doesn't end, you know, in the the normal way they would qualify as criteria for your show? But we saw it differently, and I think you see this ending differently. So do you want to expi- uh, expound on that? Okay, you said a lot of words just now. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think this ending is, is qualifies for the show? Because it's f- like, all right. I, I'm not arguing jump, with you. I just, I just jumping to the end. <laughs> no, no, no. We don't have to. We don't have to run through the ending. I just want to, want to get that out of the way because I'm sure some people are going to ask that. I mean, because it's not an all around happy ending. Like it, like you know, like you know, de- like it's hard for me to say why I think the movie fits without talking about the fucking ending. But like, I mean, we can jump to the ending. Like, this show has no structure. Nah, <laughs> fuck you. Um, we're structured as fuck. Um, no, like, things do not work, like, at all the way any character planned for them to do at the beginning of the film. Like, the plans they lay in the beginning of the film do not, they do not achieve those goals by the end of the film. And that's exactly why I think this movie qualifies for it. Absolutely, It may I not agree. be as sad or not as fucked up as some of the other films we do, but I still think it qualifies wholeheartedly. I agree, because I, I was... You just convinced me because I remember finishing the movie and being like, I don't know, man. I mean, it seems like most of them got what they wanted. But now that you put it in that perspective where it's not necessarily what they wanted, it's just what they ended up with and they, you know, make do. I can definitely see. I can definitely see how it qualifies for the show. Um, so cool. Is, I, I, I know you said I'm glad we're in agreement that we are allowed <laughs> to talk about this movie. I just wanted to bring it up, man, just because we've I've had people ask me about La La Land, so I wanted to bring it up now before we get those same uh, questions. Um, I got hands waiting for him. I know who you off. said you guys had a lot of notes uh, for this this episode, so I just want to kind of let you loose stuff. and uh, I'll respond because, like I said, I don't have much on my end. So, oh fuck! If I knew that was the case, I would have stretched beforehand. <laughs> um. Yeah, man. Um, no, like I just have a, I just have a bunch of like random trivial things I want to talk about. All right, lay it um, on me. Uh, Alesso, Sebi, do you guys have anything big you want to speak on first? Like any real big things that stand out to you? I mean, um, we're talking today 
because we were talking about this movie being a music movie, but it's actually written in like a very good way. We we're talking about today how this kind of relates to how Gatsby is written, because in Gatsby, the main character, Nick Calloway, something like that, sure, played by Tobey Maguire, he is the main character, although the movie is called Gatsby, just like this movie is called Frank. That's a and great just, comparison. And it's yeah. always the main <clears throat> character talking and idolizing this mythical creature that is this other person, Gatsby or Frank. And I don't know. I thought that was interesting. It's like his Moby yeah, no. Dick. Like <laughs> it's a the, the the title doesn't even relate to the protagonist. Right. Yeah. No. Uh. Yeah. When Ale- we were talking about that earlier, when Alesso dropped like the Gatsby like comparison to me, it like literally blew my mind because I started thinking about all like the little like things that kind of tied them together, and it's so spot on. Mm-hmm. Um. Like it's absurd because yeah, like this entire story is told. Like the entire story of this movie is told through John's point of view. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily John's movie, though. Exactly. You, like, I think we're just the, like I'm I glad we're supposed you to see the movie through him. What? I think we're just supposed to see the movie through him. That's like yeah. important because of how, like, what his state of mind is at the beginning of the movie and how it is at the end. Yeah, um, like it's one of those movies where, like, and I use this word kind of loosely but the villain is our protagonist yes yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up movie. that was that was gonna be my question to the group was the, john is 100 percent the antagonist of this movie right oh yeah yeah i i think so he lives enough to see himself become the villain yeah yeah and i, I think it's <laughs> nice. interesting because it's not it, it's super it, it's done in a way where he doesn't really have any bad intentions he's just really ignorant and misguided yeah yeah. And that's like that's that whole thing I wanted. That was to that was about. literally going to segue perfectly into my other only other note was um, this movie draws a fine line between being famous and doing what you love. And I thought it was interesting because I feel like, well, why can't it be both? And you know, I I believe John really does want to be a great musician. He doesn't necessarily have the knack for it, which we find out obviously throughout the movie. He barely can write a song. Um, can't go to his farthest corners yeah (laughs) where the ending shows you know frank is more comfortable playing in an empty bar with his friends than he is in front of thirty thousand people um and it's just why he's so great yeah it's just i i found it odd that that there was no like way that they could structure the story around someone who enjoys doing both i i don't know um i don't i don't think it's really about that i think I think, and, and it's very interesting because I think that Frank, um, as a person, uh, as an artist, and the band in general, they just kind of write music for themselves. They don't really write it for anybody else. And they go through like extraneous recording processes to, to make ridiculously complicated music that they don't really know if anybody's ever going to listen to because they don't really care. And so in that sense, when you think about it, I feel like Frank's creative process is is art in like its purest state and and that sounds super corny to say but um i think that frank also has this side of him where um he likes creating music with claire and and the band but he also wants uh, more people to see it he wants to he wants to show the world who he is um and that's the reason why I think that Frank is really like he leans towards John so much, even though everybody else in the van sees right through him, they see that he doesn't uh, like have anything like uh, like uh, when when Frank is at the bed, just kind of like after the the whole stabbing situation um, <laughs> and the, the drummer <laughs> quote the whole stabbing situation. <laughs> <end> quote. <laughs> no, Somebody gets stabbed. The in chinchilla this movie. incident. Um, <laughs> chinchilla. Uh, so when all that happens the drummer who's never spoken english at this point before is like i can see it in his eyes when he see when he looks in the mirror he doesn't see anything and i think that's the whole uh issue with john is that he's trying to see himself through frank because he cannot write a song to save his life and frank seems to have this like magical ability to just craft the most wonderful art, according to John, out of nowhere. 
And he was warned by Don. Don't talk. Don't like the guy who got commits suicide at some point. There's a suicide in this movie. Yeah. Is, this is a very oh, yeah. dark movie. Scoot McNary. This is a very dark movie. <laughs> almost, almost two suicides because if you think about it, the first time, yeah, um, yeah, the Sa- the Saren and Phillips meet John Sarampers. is because their keyboard player is trying to drown himself in the water. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean. Yeah. I, you know. it's interesting. Yeah. Never, never say a suicide attempt isn't a good networking opportunity. <laughs> it's, <Yep. laughs> it's, that's the, that's the quote for the episode. That's the poll. Um, it's, it's interesting because John sees the potential in Frank, both in his music abilities and the nuances of his person, like the, the paper mache head. And he, he even says, it, he's like, that's our ticket. Like, that's what's going to make this band famous. And, just wants to bypass kind of like the well in order to be famous as a musician you it doesn't matter what you look like you kind of have to have good music like um True. and he completely lacks that so he like he's obviously looking to frank as like you have everything i want you have the respect of your peers you have this insane ability to create music uh to be able to command the stage be confident but it's also interesting because at the end of the movie it's kind of revealed that frank's not necessarily all there and there was not like a traumatic incident or anything that brought it on. He was just Frank is just different, and it's something un- he, unobtainable. Like John could put on right, the paper mache yeah. mask, he could you know learn to be a better musician, but he'll never have what Frank has. And I think that's what he realizes at the end of the movie, and that's why we get the ending yeah. we get. And even so, I love the kind of comparison there. Like because at the beginning of the film, we see John walking through his neighborhood. He sees you know a dog getting walked or no sorry a kid on a bike um a car getting washed an old couple and then when he goes and finds frank at the end he sees those three same things a kid on a bike an old couple a car getting washed <laughs> i didn't even put and, that you know, together it's, it's oh. this it's the like it, frank has the exact same like he's living in the same kind of neighborhood like he's from bluff kansas um and then when he's talking to his parents he's like you know and he talks about how Frank, you know, I can't remember. Did he like Frank was in an accident or something, right? When he was little, was uh, that what it was? No, no, they no said he just had nothing happened. Yeah, he, the dad okay, says nothing happened right. to and, him. And they yeah. make um, they make the point where he's like, oh yeah, this, yeah, this is, is exactly this is like also my home. A movie about mental illness. Yeah, yeah, and I absolutely. That I I was um, it's funny when in that scene where John and Frank were in a motel. And uh, John asks Frank to clean his mask because uh, he stinks. And then he tells him to take it off. And then he starts actually trying to rip his head off. Um, when you look at it from the perspective that Frank is actually a guy with a mental illness who actually believes and feels that that head is part of his body. Yeah. And then this maniac ginger is trying to rip his head off. I have a certificate. That just makes it uh, <laughs> very dark when you look at it from from. Oh no! Yeah, like all the events of the movie through that lens give it like a whole new. After you like twist. see this film, the second time you watch, you're like, man, this movie is dark as fuck. Yeah. And yet, it's and amazing we- how much comedy they get out of that paper mache mask. Like oh, any yeah. there are so any many single layers. thing Frank does <laughs> is automatically ten times more hilarious. Like like. The, the, when he the, I, I, the second biggest laugh for me was when he's in the shower and John thinks he's gonna <laughs> catch him without his mask on and he's got the plastic bag over it. It's so fucking good. <laughs> I thought something very interesting about the mask was the fact that the first time I saw it, it kind of looked like wacky, like funny. Mm-hmm. By the time the movie progresses, it starts like change, like the reaction on the mask. Even though it's always the same facial expression, it kind of changes. Like. When just the way by just by the way he tilts his head, it it just seems like, like darker. You, you like really start to like pick up on his emotions just through his body language and like and all it, that. and it's like his face changes. Like the emotion that you thought that the mask had is something different as the movie progresses. And it's it's right after he stops kind of conveying what his actual facial expressions are. Is that he <laughs> like Fassbender doesn't get enough like recognition for this performance? He's doing so much. With literally just from the neck down. Like, he obviously has nothing to show when he has that mask on, but you can tell by his body language. He it's, guns to show. It's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love the scene where they're like, he's like uh, wrestling, and it's like, oh my, okay, Frank's fucking. Oh, cut. Frank is ripped. Frank is straight like, ripped. <laughs> what Apparently, the, fuck? the secret to that is just eating grown up. 
<laughs> uh, that's a good I've scene been trying too. To find, I've been trying to find some grown up. <laughs> I, I love that. That's it's just it makes me think of uh, Big Lebowski. That's such a good joke for Frank. <laughs> um, very true. Very true. Um, no, I just want to talk about like the actual like songs, like the actual music in the movie, oh, and how fucking God. amazing it is. Like, dude, Lone <laughs> Standing better. Lone Standing Tuft is one of the best songs I've ever heard. Maybe yeah. we should we drop them in randomly throughout the episode. <laughs> I completely agree. Uh, Lone Standing Tough, like the acoustic song, he just oh, makes up. Oh, yeah. In the spot. That's, That's one of the most magical. I think, right. no, the music is fantastic. And also the fact that all the actors are playing the music, are performing the music in, like, like, they're that's, recording, like on, that's like on camera. They're recording a performance. That makes it just all so much more amazing because it just, everything is... It sounds amazing. It looks amazing. It's five minutes is some of the best studio porn I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. That, like, five minutes that scene recording of scene them recording is... is yeah. I don't think there's anything like it. Carla like, Azar directed that whole part. She was a drummer of the band. She, oh, yeah, she was directing right. the whole band as they recorded. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, like, the main piece there. Um, No, I think when we were rewatching this the other night, like, the three of us pretty much talked through the whole movie because we'd all seen it before and, like, we were... Like, oh, look at that, blah, 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 oh, that's funny, blah, blah, blah. Oh, Except we... during that scene where they were recording, we didn't say a goddamn word. <laughs> There's... So we were just entranced yeah. by what was happening. I think I think the the most amazing thing about that scene, and I hadn't really uh, realized until this time watching it, is that they're recording to a tape machine. That means that if they fuck anything Analog, up, bro. if they screw anything up, I don't know if I can curse. Uh Fuck yeah, you can. Uh, okay. What uh, you listened to this podcast before? <laughs> True. Okay. If they fuck anything up, I can't imagine that they have a lot to spare. So when Frank says that they need to perfect every detail of the album before uh, recording it, he means it because because they're recording live to tape. Exactly. And so just the way that the music builds up and how they set everything up, uh, to me the tension was just like. You Hopable. could feel it. It really was. And the fact that the performance was actually real just elevates it to like something that I don't think... I'm honestly having a hard time thinking of anything anything that has topped this or will ever top this. Lay an egg, little bird. <laughs> <laughs> the, girl, the owl, the silent killer. <laughs> we've been quoting this we, movie yeah, we've all been week. quoting this movie all week, yeah. and we can't stop. Yeah, and honestly, um, it doesn't stop... I was rewatching it today, and we've missed a few quotes, bro. Oh my god! Um, well, if... I, I'm sorry to have offended you by not <laughs> quoting enough of the movie, Alesso. <laughs> Damn. Um, well, yeah. if you guys don't mind, I have like three uh, main points that I've kind of said a bunch of times, but I, that I kind of want to make about I the movie. Fucking guess. So, uh, <laughs> the first one is Thumbs on the podcast. Once just takes over. Okay, so um, I'm gonna act like you didn't say that. Copy. That's just rude. Um. This is a movie by musicians for musicians. Uh, you can tell by all the thing, all the again, all the little things uh, about it, all the little lines, all the little references, the creative process, um, everything. All of those things happen when you make music. The um, band manager is drinking excessively. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you can notice that from the very beginning when he starts just making shit up from yeah. stuff he's looking like every like everyone who's who has been in a band has done that just start even, even down to the moments where like they ask John to share their music with them uh, and he clearly doesn't have anything to show for it so he's very nervous and that's like a very nerve wracking situation that we've all. It, like if you've ever grabbed a guitar, you've definitely seen yourself. That's me every time Sebastian tries to get me to sing. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what happens. Um, AKA, AKA earlier this afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Um, the second is that John really is a dick, and and he <laughs> <laughs> don't don't be like John. Don't be like John. And I think I think that the main issue with John is that he is from the very start of the movie lying to himself. Uh. As, like he, the Dude. way he's he's always trying to write songs from a place that doesn't really come from him. He's just like trying to emulate what he's listening to in the radio, yeah. and that's why he kind of like writes these shitty pop sounding things that 
don't really make a lot of sense. They kind of like in paper kind of work for what they should be, but they're just really bad because he doesn't have the ear for it. And that's just the way it is. And that's a very frustrating position to be on. And I don't really say that I reprimand them too much for uh, getting delirious, deliri- uh, how do you say it? deliriums of grandeur. grandeur yeah. Um, by the point where he's Good at job. South by Southwest. Because I feel like if, if it got that, to that point that then like he he would just try to take over it's only natural but but he's very much um not really in touch of who he is which is why he's always trying to like watch these uh songwriting greatness programs um he tries to to see himself through frank and and it's funny because nobody in the man ever gives into this nobody ever buys in on it like in every conversation that he and Claire have, she belittles him. Uh, she makes him to be nothing more than fingers being told what to play. I just want to say, this movie has one of my favorite sex scenes ever. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, that, yeah, no, it has, like, it, it is a hate fuck to end all hate fucks. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's amazing. It's and pretty good. Even then, even then, Claire is just cold you disgust me. to him. Yeah, like literally oh. moments after they have um, relations in the hot tub, she's Poitous. just like, "Thank you, Alessa." Um, she's just like, "You disgust me." I had everything Wait. you stand for. Yeah, just like, <laughs> damn. Yeah. Okay. And um, then she threatens to stab him. And and then she does. Yeah. Then about ten minutes she, into the uh, movie, she comes through. She <laughs> stabs him. Yeah. I and and it's and it's funny the way that he's written too. I think is really cool because. Um, he ends up feeling really out of place. He's like tonally deaf uh, when it comes to the rest of the movie. It's almost like he's a character from a from a from an actual comedy, but nobody else is in on the joke. So there's no laugh track. He's just very weird. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. Um, yeah. So I think he means well uh, because I think that by the end of the movie, he actually does realize what this whole thing is about, and that's uh, my third point. But I think that he just got carried away, but that he vo- he was very much very ignorant, and um, yeah. I just thought you were pausing for a dramatic effect. Um, okay. I forgot what the second word of so, that was. How do you guys feel about the uh, use of, I mean, I was going to say social media, but it's mainly Twitter in this movie. Because usually when I see like a, like a someone's like typing on their phone and it pops up on the screen, it's like, oh, fuck, really? I, I thought it was it very organic. It, it was works organic. so yeah. well. It does. Yeah. I and, thought about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I didn't have a problem with it. That's another thing. He also has some John. of the worst tweets of all time. And it's, yeah, he's so corny. <laughs> but it's kind of so corny. It's kind of important because you can see his following. I think that's true. What, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, which yeah that yeah. was I, I didn't notice that the first time I watched it. But he begins with like twelve followers. Yeah, it it, it makes it 14, very. It's fourteen. 14 it makes it yeah. very believable that they would land something like side by side was by doing um, right, wacky yeah. video. Like if if there was videos of Frank on the internet, people would go crazy over them. Oh yeah, it, it just makes absolutely sense. Um, the story is amazing. True. It is um, odd that they get invited to South by Southwest though, just from a, a Twitter video. It's really not. No, it's it's really not. It's no? a lot more common than you would think. Yeah. I, well, yeah, I guess no, with that kind of was, gimmick too. I mean the, the you, yeah 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 because the whole what, they had, like, some, situation like, twenty three thousand. I I loved like yeah. <laughs> I love the restaurant scene where they're like yeah we got twenty three thousand followers they're like well that's nothing and then Frank starts having a meltdown. <laughs> they do not love. <laughs> they do not, <laughs> they do not, know not love, love and adore us. <laughs> they do not know and love us. <laughs> like that's like that's really the beginning of Frank's breakdown <laughs> is right there. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a good segue to another point I wanted to make the the fact that this is a movie about. Um, mental, mental illness and and about how that really translates into the person that Frank is because it's Frank is like an amazing person all around mm-hmm. like this is this is the kind of person that you spend two minutes talking to and you're crying your eyes out and like like the know, lady who spoke well, yeah, with the yeah. German lady yeah, the German that lady that comes amazing. in to to uh, ask for the money. Uh, and and not even in like a violent way. She she's cries. like very desperate. She needs the money. So Frank talks to her, and she 
like goes through, the, through this really quick uh, <laughs> cycle of of like Emotions. grief and and relief and then just like being ecstatic and so happy, um, and and it and it the the movie makes it so that it's totally believable that that's something that Frank could do because he it really is just amazing. He really is the gifted person. Um, Meanwhile, this is the same guy who within a few scenes is chasing John around in the front lawn with a shovel going it will be worth exactly it. so so it's natural <laughs> that John would think that you know make a, a like the, the relationship between his mental illness and his creativity and that i think happens to be like John's downfall because he is looking for the answer in all the wrong places he's he tries to f- he's like uh when when he said the at the forest and he uh, starts uh, walking away from from dawn and he's like oh i don't have a i don't ha- i didn't have a traumatic childhood i don't have a mental illness where am i supposed to find that kind of inspiration when in reality the people that you know have to deal with those issues would probably rather not yeah uh, right even if it meant that they couldn't write the songs that they're writing because of it and that's not like I, I think that that's the whole point of the movie. That's, that's why that's not Frank's even... parents tell them it exactly. actually slowed them down. Exactly. So it's it, it's it's a movie. It, it's about John realizing that he has been lying to himself this whole time. That he doesn't. That it's not about where he comes from or, or what he's gone through. I also thought this movie was gonna go like if he, it kind of looks like he's growing in the movie, and then he just you're like oh no because it's just Frank opening up to john so you kind of like see frank acting differently more openly more i don't know but then it just goes downhill hey dustin i love you all i love i can't sing no you can't um but hey you know what what i love free shit well who doesn't love free shit i mean especially who doesn't love free movies free blu-rays like, who who wouldn't want that? Possibly uh, you. If you don't want to win, psycho people. if you don't want to win free shit, just stop listening right now. But if you do, go right now to reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. Find the official discussion thread for this week's movie, Frank, and leave this contest code that I'm about to give you as a comment in there. And we'll ran- randomly select a winner, get in touch with you, send you out free stuff, free movies, free swag. Why not? Uh, so yeah, enter this code as a comment. What you doing with that bag? So yeah, leave, I can't sing, but what you doing with that bag? Leave that as a comment. We'll randomly select someone and get in touch with you. Send you out a free Blu-ray. Uh, so yeah, I love you all. So Dustin, that is your most likable contest code <laughs> ever. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> I think I, I think the mental illness angle that gets dropped on you, you know, two thirds to the movie, it really sets up a statement for, like you said on rewatches, how different the movie is portrayed. Because, you know, a lot of people can. I, I was actually, you know, watching the trailer before we started recording, and one of the recommended videos was like the top ten. It was some channel that was like top ten hipster movies or something i saw that same video yeah actually. and frank was an honorable mention on it and you know just doing the little bit of research i did a lot of people consider this a quirky kind of movie like you know like the junos or the other kind of indie movies where like the characters oh, fuck juno <laughs> it looks very indie it, it does. well it, it does that's actually why i started it, it kinda, why it i watched is. it the first time it, it does like, in the trailer you know uh, I can attest to that kind of tone too, but when you find out that it's not like this character is just yeah. different or wacky for the sake of it, like that it is him just expressing himself the only way he knows how because of this mental illness, it really sheds a new light. Like I thought the diner scene was hilarious the first time I saw it, and then on the rewatch, when you realize it's because he's not all there, it's a little scarier. It's a little think- more upsetting. Yeah. The first time I watched it, and I remember this, uh, like it blew my mind when the dad says, uh, "the you know the mental illness didn't write the 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 music. Mm-hmm. Like, if anything, it slowed him down." Yeah. Um. For some reason, it really hadn't clicked to me uh, until that point, and then it just kind of all made sense to me. Yeah. <sighs> yep. 
Um, yeah, that was a pretty, that was a, like a very, that's a very, uh, like, not for John, but I think for the audience as well. Like, that is such an eye-opening scene where he, where John goes and meets his parents and finds Frank again. Yeah, because even, even he is, like, is not even that clear at that point. He's like, because he, he says, oh my god, all the, all the torture that he had to go through through all, all that amazing music. And then the, the dad was like, oh yeah, no, that wasn't, it was, you know, if anything, it slowed him down. And then he's yeah. like, oh. Well, if uh, if you guys yeah. don't object, I kind of want to jump into the ending and talk about it because that's the only. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, so <laughs> to set it up, uh, in Sebastian case Sebastian is excited. <laughs> to set it up for, in case you haven't seen it or if you need some help remembering, uh, Frank's head does plop off after running out into traffic trying to escape John. Yeah, um, his fake head, anyway. His fake head, yeah, I should his, say. His, his fake head. His fake head. Uh, John ends up tracking <laughs> down uh, his parents' home and finds out that Frank is there. We get to see Michael Fosbender for the first time without the the paper mache hat on, and you can see looking, the looking pretty rough. Yeah, I, like I love that detail though of like his hair being thinned. Mm. Yeah, where, like the head set, like and that this, was kind of like the indents and the great. scars from wearing the yeah. mask for so long. Um, jo- like, go oh, go ahead. Just great, just great detail. Just yeah, yeah, great detail I agree. I have to say, uh, John asks his parents, you know, what happened to Frank, and as we mentioned before, the parents are like nothing. He's just He's always kind of been like that. Uh, I made the dad reveals he made the paper mache for him the the head uh, as like a I, don't, I think it was like he said he was going to like a party or a dance or something that he that Frank said was a costume party and it turns out it wasn't. He just wanted yeah, it, which again make that makes it so much sadder that he wanted to hide away inside the mask. Like, um, but yeah, so John goes to a bar where he finds the rest of the band. Has kind of the El Madrid. Yeah, have kind of formed a group to play just kind of bar music to an empty bar. Um, he brings Frank along, and of course, none of the members have seen Frank without the hat on. So, it, without the head on, so it kind of takes him a moment to realize who he is. He, you know, tells him he loves being in the bar. He loves them. They kind of sing a song together. John watches. Song. Oh my god, dude! the The way they transition into like playing that song together is so good. Yeah. That's so like it just kind of starts with Frank just kind of saying things. That's that's that I, I think that's very magical because uh, they they write that song You're on the magical. spot. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. literally and, right then and, and there. so it, it's really cool because they're not entirely they they probably suspect that it's Frank, but it's not until he really grabs the mic yeah. and does his thing that he does, and they they know that he does so well that you know they immediately start clicking to him and going with him. Um, as a band and and it's and it's and it's almost like they're just st- the part of the same unit it's yeah not even mm-hmm. i think not you can see uh together now i think you can see maggie Gyllenhaal kind of piecing it together once frank starts singing like who he yeah, is I, I, yeah i feel like because no, her like they were closest mm-hmm. of all of them i think she kind of realizes it before anyone else does and she starts crying too yeah yeah because this is mind you this is the first time that she sees her sees uh frank cry yeah yeah. First time they see any kind of Fuck. real facial expression or emotion from him. Um, mm-hmm. And John watches this, realizes that he has no part in this and kind of exits well, the bar. And I he love never the way, had. I love the way they shoot that, too, because it shows, you know, them doing their thing. It shows um, John at the bar watching, cuts back to, like, this very emotional band moment, and then it cuts back to just the empty chair. Yeah. Like, I thought that was so fucking well done and then it just shows from it like a long wide shot of john just um walking away from the bar and that's pretty much where it ends and uh so yeah john basically just realizes he has no part in this he kind of interfered with this band this whole time and in doing so affected frank negatively maybe positively kind of ambiguous however you want to take a look at it obviously with the perspective Mally mentioned earlier it is kind of Kind of, it is kind of a downer that I actually, um, I actually think it's a happy ending. Okay, oh, well, no, 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 no that's perfect. So let's bitch. let's hear let's hear about that because that's a good uh, that's a good I just, line. I think um, I know what you're gonna say because I just so, thought about that. So, um, well, John, I already kind of said because uh, you know at the end he understands his place in all this and that he doesn't really fit with that band and that he has to let go. Uh, for everybody else, though. If you really think about it, they didn't really end up that far from where they started mm-hmm. at the beginning of the movie, except for obviously they don't have Dawn anymore. But 
They are still playing in shitty bars. Though. If anything, like John... Man. Nobody listening to them. Um, and If anything, John helped him like take off his mask and true, perform without true. his mask. Like this whole end of our or whatever. Is well, you guys are just yeah, and, tearing and, apart my you know, silver lining. <laughs> well, um, and in that sense, I feel like the silver lining is that to me, Oh, so we jumping in oh, already? We got jump in oh, with silver lining already. Bro. Okay, no, I'm, a, I'm a comes take that on back. the podcast once. I'm gonna take that back. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm ready. Dustin, are we like we cool to jump into silver lining? Well, yeah, Amelia, I wanted to hear what you initially like, kind of to recap Don't worry about it. why you thought. Yeah, you had a few notes. Huh? <laughs> you had a few notes, man. Yeah, did, did you? Boy, you have a whole notebook in your lap. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of wanted to hear you recap, kind of why you think it's it's not as uh, a pick me up as much as people might think it is like I, li- I like hearing the the on and off the debate about this because it it's i think it is depending on where your standpoint is how you look at this ending it could be looked at i'm 100 in the middle yeah it's <laughs> i'm, I'm kind of right there too where i'm like i can see it both ways and i'm not sure which way i lean uh i mean i definitely like this movie like this i mean i don't get depressed when i watch this movie like i do some of our other films it's, it's definitely amazing. like uh, like I enjoy watching this movie. Like I fucking I used to watch this movie. Like I actually I still do watch this movie once a month, <laughs> just because it's just one of those movies. Where I'm like, dude, fuck yeah, I'm gonna watch it. <laughs> um, but I mean, at the same time, you know, like I said before, the goals they like every character's goal at the beginning of this movie they to a certain extent do not succeed in. I mean, if we're looking at that from the view of the protagonist, who I do consider the villain. You know, he loses. He, if you think about it, yeah. at the end, like his yeah. goal was to join this band, become famous, and you know he's left alone. And he lost his job. He invested yeah. oh, yeah. all yeah. his that's, money. That's, oh, so he bad. Doesn't have that's a something that, that a lot anymore. of that's, people don't realize when they watch this movie. He say. loses his job. He spends all, pretty much his entire life saving. He realizes he is never going to be a star. Like and just yeah. if you're the protagonist, like. That's the thing. That's why this movie is good for this podcast. Because this, yeah. if you usually like, you're standing from the protagonist's standpoint of view. Who is the guy who's telling the whole story? Yeah. And he's lost everything. Like, uh, he lost his job. He's yeah. Smart. As much as much as it's probably a good thing that he understands uh, where he fucked up in the first place. At the same time, he he'd probably have a lot of good reasons to not be incredibly thrilled about what's to come like i feel john does come out of this a better person <laughs> right but he is still broke. a dick and it, but he's in a worse situation though <laughs> he is well so i guess it depends who at the beginning it's for being a dick i guess it depends whose yeah. side you look at if you look at it as john this is not a good ending for him uh if you look at exactly. it the band they pretty much kind of are where they started but it's way more of a setback i think i kind of i think it they were affected way more negatively than they they I probably initially realized maybe this Frank this paper mache less Frank is better for the band maybe it's better for them as people I mean I definitely think Frank is maybe better off now that he doesn't have the head I mean initially we this is like early stages of him like kind of dealing with it so it, who knows he could just relapse and go right back to it but Hey, yeah, they I mean, got. It's, it's only a few weeks between South by Southwest and I think the end of this movie. Well, yeah, but is is the is the mask like an inherently a bad thing? I that's what I was I was gonna say. I I think Frank was more open and more like. I think the mask helped him cope with like just interacting with people, like because he's seen way more fluid and social media gimmick. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. whenever he has his sit downs with John and it's just them one on one, he's so charismatic like when he's describing his facial expressions he seems like a genuinely kind person and like easy to get along with like a normal guy the only thing separating them is that paper mache head and but once that's removed from him we the first time we see frank without the mache paper mache head he's tuning a radio he's trying to play the piano and just just dead just completely blank behind the eyes it's and they got an album out of out of all of this so (laughs) that's kind of good they Uh, got their album down so that yeah. I guess that's a good segue into Silver Lining. So, uh, Mally, do you want to go first? Do you guys have one? Nope, you're going that, first. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, we kind of already talked about it, but yeah, I think... Um, Just because you said they kind of tore yours apart, so I'm really curious as to what Yeah, it is. <laughs> I was going to say is that because of John's actions, 
um, he kind of inadvertently brought the band back together. I mean, obviously, he literally escorts Frank to the band um, and, and gave Frank what I would hope he he is is the medicine he needs. Like, removing that mask, I don't know. It's up for debate whether it was a good idea or a bad idea. I would think in the long run, it's obviously going to be good for him. He'll learn to, you know, interact with people, to make eye contact, learn to use those facial expressions. I mean, Maggie Gyllenhaal's character crying just at seeing him, it's a beautiful moment. And, you know, without the gimmick, who knows if this band can can make it or not and who cares if it matters because they are obviously way more happier playing to an empty bar than they are a crowd of people john was the only one who wanted the south by southwest thing and kind of talked frank into it so they removed the negative element from the band so i think there's nothing but brighter futures for them for, for honestly, everyone that's what that's what makes frank like exactly like my favorite type of musician he is literally <laughs> on it a thousand percent because you just like the whole band they're on it just because they want to like they love art and what they do and it's a thousand percent art because it's a very artsy group yeah, just... and the whole music type and john is just on some other world yeah. all right um all right i want to go last because i want to see if anyone steps on my toes oh god for silver linings <laughs> um all right Alessio, Sebastian, when you guys either you already one? said mine, and you know which one it was. <laughs> Say it again. Maybe someone. Maybe we have a listener that fast forwards until they hear the word silver lining. <laughs> <My> silver. <laughs> that'd be a, that'd be a good like really shitty superpower, like to be able to just scrub through waveforms and get right there to it. <laughs> mine was a very full soul esque silver lining. It was even a suicide attempt could lead to a ne- good network. <laughs> <laughs> that that is definitely going to be the quote for the episode. Jesus, oh my god, <laughs> yeah. Leave it, yeah. Out of context, I, some of the things we say on this show are just fucking horrible. Oh, so <laughs> I mean, bad. I'm on so many FBI watch lists. <laughs> I've said on this podcast, just just from like. Some of our like just from the hard candy episode. Oh alone, man, yeah. I'm on some lists. Yeah. <laughs> um, some questionable shit. Yeah. Um, Sebastian, silver lining, sir. Um, my silver lining is extremely corny, but oh, I don't care. That's weird. Uh, because <laughs> so I think that you know after all they went through, and it's I, I feel like important to remember that the movie takes place through like a they go through like a lot together um and they go through the entirety of a almost a year yeah recording an album um to tape which again makes it a lot more complicated and then they almost they they gathered an online following they went to south by southwest they were pretty much on the verge of blowing up and becoming famous and then everything goes crashing down and then they end up in the exact same place that they started. Mm. Um, so I think that if John hadn't come into the picture, they would have just continued to, to do what they did. Um, but they went through uh, all those misfortunes and, and, and they you know, had bad times. But at the end of the day, they came together and they immediately clicked and started doing what they do. Um, and I think I think that's really cool because uh, one of the things that I I thought about when when I started to make music is that you will always have music like even if you're sixty, just bored of doing whatever the hell else you were doing with your life, you can always sit down and make some music. If you have friends that make music, you can always go and make music with them, which is probably why. Mally hangs out with that a lot. Uh, with us a lot. Music brings people together. Music, yeah. yeah music is about people. Music brings people together. You um, were completely right, bro. That was very corny. So, are you crying? <laughs> <laughs> For the record, I am not crying. Mm. Um, Audio podcast, that's not true. man. Audio that's podcast. Not true. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah. Um. You know. John was a dick, so he had a comment, man. <laughs> <laughs> um all right my silver lining which no one touched on and i'm kind of surprised 
was that through all like the matches that happened, like them going to South by Southwest, Clara stabbing John, um, the other band members quitting, um, Frank having a breakdown on stage, um, him and John checked up in the hotel and him running out, getting hit by the car, head smashed, disappears. John can't find him. And he, oh, he does yeah. finally find him. He finds him at his parents' house in Bluff, Kansas. Which, that's my silver lining, is that it was something that didn't occur to me until this last rewatch. When was the last time Frank's parents heard from him or knew where he was or knew Oh my like, how god, that's beautiful. Your that's a good, that's a, you know what, that's like, a good silver lining. Amazing. I was really inspired by our last week's episode Lisa. where uh, Mitch actually had a really good silver lining. I was like, you know what, I'm going to try this week. <laughs> um, no, that's that a good one. That's, that's, but no, like, I didn't even think about you, that. Like, when was the last time his parents like knew his whereabouts or had spoken to him? Like, they don't address it in the movie, but like, I don't know. There's so much subtlety in his parents' like delivery of their lines, like the performances and those characters. Like, they're happy he's home. True. That's, yeah. And yeah. like, I don't know, dude. That and that, they that, know that, what's going on. Yeah. And they like, they kind of know exactly, exactly yeah, what's going on. Exactly what like that. Yeah. That shit hit me for some reason this rewatch like it really hit me was frank's connection with his parents shout out to lisa shout out to lisa all right lisa doing her thing all right that's uh, my mother for anyone who's curious <laughs> that's uh so that's frank everybody that was a good good discussion um we got one last thing to do mally before we uh wrap it up here we got to suggest pick me up movie alternatives movies people watch after they watch frank so okay. uh okay they might pick them back up if they're not feeling too great i got one okay me too go ahead i got one actually i actually know what i'm gonna let seven alessa go first okay i feel like one of them might say the one i have i kind of feel like mine yeah. might so get I mentioned have a too backup. <laughs> all right tell you what dustin go first are you sure i i, I kind of like no, no, no. <laughs> go for it sweetheart i'm gonna get pissed insist. if he okay. says mine all right uh so the, the the key here the the whole point of the show is music so i think <laughs> oh, i think a, a great movie that's got a great soundtrack oh, he's going for it. He's going for it. is scott pilgrim versus the world oh, <laughs> <laughs> guys it's okay i have another someone else could take no, that one no no no, no don't no, take another you, no, no you, don't you get said it. all right well i have another if need be i just kind of take like slip it don't under the radar dare <laughs> nobody says it you should say it again. i do all right no i do have i had a backup no Scott i'm going first, first. Okay, you said a less go. whoever goes last is not going to do well <laughs> it's just the, the numbers are not there for you <laughs> so sir what do you have begin again oh okay Sleep begin again, again. Yeah. um begin again for those of you who don't know it's a mark ruffalo Kira knightley movie mm-hmm. beautiful about movie music. beautiful film mm-hmm. yeah and the it's music about music also Sebastian, Sebastian, do you have anything? Uh, I'm gonna go with La La Land. Ironically, that we have covered that film on this podcast, <laughs> <laughs> but a very controversial episode. Some people didn't think it qualified. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Well, it happens. Alesso has Alesso, a it's musician just, in the room, never seen. La it's La La not even in the watch list. It's, it's not even. Yeah, there's a big board about five feet from us that has a list of See, maybe like 35 films that they've been like. Just trying Scratching, to watch, yeah. And I usually add something to the list like once a week. We got more movies and than the that's a movie La that La tries. Land's not even on that board. La La Land is a movie that goes a little too hard on the whole music thing. I'm gonna go a little too hard on you. It's a little like, weird whenever hard. someone suggests uh, as a pick me up a movie we've already covered. But <laughs> if you're gonna pick one, I would, La La Land's not a bad one since it is yeah, subjective. It's a very enjoyable movie. Yeah, and just, it's just just stop watching. I don't know, like 20 minutes. When you got 20 minutes of the movie left, just stop watching it. <laughs> there you go. And Damn. it's a very happy film. Mm. All right. Mm. I'm going to go with another music film, of course. Almost Famous. Yeah. Previously mentioned. Good movie. Fantastic film. Yeah. Fantastic film. I am a golden god. <laughs> well, you know what? Tell Rolling Stone. Start squatting the movie. I love drugs. <laughs> yeah, Molly does this. You done? <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna True story. I'm gonna drop another one just because I feel bad that I stepped on everyone's toes. Really? Uh, you already took Scott Pilgrim, you're gonna double down on it. I'm gonna go at a, a movie that 
does not get a you lot of love. With Scott Pilgrim, and you're going to try to follow that up. It's not going to follow it up. I'll go ahead and drop the ball. Um, if it's Jaws 2, I'm pissed. <laughs> another movie about music. Another mu- movie about a musician trying to make it who uh, oh, also has an issue with writing their own music uh, and writing the coattails of someone else. A movie I fucking love, and a lot of people don't seem to either know about it or don't like it. But I'm going no. with the movie Rockstar, starring Marky, Marky Mark, Jennifer Aniston. Fucking awesome movie if you've never seen it. It's about an 80s hair wow. metal band, uh, a cover band that the vocalist wow. of the cover band becomes the vocalist of the real exactly band. I what movie you're talking about, and it's amazing. It's fucking <laughs> rad. Um, um, honestly, when you said that, I really, like, when you were giving a description, I really thought you were going to go with 1991's Cool as Ice. <laughs> you know what? Sure. Starring Vanilla toss, Ice. Toss it in the pile. Why and not? <laughs> you didn't go with that, and I'm shocked, but you know what? I'm a... Th- we mentioned it earlier. Fucking eight mile. There you go. Why not? Oh uh, yeah. That one. Oh, Nick and Ooh. Nick and Nora's playlist. Nick and Nora's infinite playlist. Infinite We're just gonna throw out some yeah. music. Though. Eight, eight <laughs> mile um, might be a contender for our show, though. <laughs> um. So yeah. Why? Uh, that's a. You didn't watch the same movie. Because he wins the rap battle, and then he's like, "I'm going back to work," and with my garbage bag full of clothes. <laughs> but. But that's he, the grind, man. He showed that's them. The, that's don't, the hustle, baby. He showed don't, them, don't, bro. Don't, don't right. the hustle. Grind, man, bro. I see it differently, maybe. Uh, all right. Also, straight out of Compton. Why not? Uh, oh, ends with AIDS. Uh, Frank, 2014, <laughs> directed by Liddy Abramson. Uh, if you want to get more Silver Linings playlist, you can always subscribe wherever you're at right now. We're on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, and YouTube. Pretty much covering the board wherever you get podcasts uh if you would if you don't mind please leave us a rating in one of those places let us know how we're doing you can like us on facebook facebook.com slash the silver linings playlist or follow us on twitter and instagram silver linings playlist you'll find us uh if you want to talk more about frank or any other previous episode we've covered you can do that here's my cell phone number <laughs> on our subreddit reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist you can also enter that, that also contest works. code we gave you for frank and possibly win a free movie uh you can also give us suggestions there tell us how we're doing anything you want to do you can do on our subreddit as well uh mally clue for next week uh for next week's episode, this one's mine. It's your pick, so I don't know what the fuck you're asking me for. And it was funny because it was... A, I don't even know what we're doing next week. Well, it's a movie that I hadn't seen before until uh, I read that it had an ending that wasn't too great. Uh, so I threw it in, the, in on the schedule and... Okay. I actually rewatched it because I wanted to get a good clue. I won't rewatch it. I actually watched it for the first time earlier because I wanted to get a good <laughs> clue for next week. And uh, okay. here's what I got. <clears throat> We have the magic rocks. So do with that what you will. We'll find out next week that what it what it was. I, uh, Sebastian and Alessa, thank you for joining if us. I knew what movie we were doing next week. <laughs> Sebastian and Alessa, thank, thank you for being us. on the show. You guys were awesome. Thanks, man. Bringing a, thank you for having me. I, I didn't have to do much work because you guys did it all for me. So thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> it's a fun movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so again, thank you everybody for listening. Mally, I'll see you next week. As always... Chinchilla. Chinchilla. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Coca Cola, lipstick ring, go dance all night, dance all night. I've got dancing legs. Woo! I've got dancing legs! They won't stop the dancing, no, they won't stop the dancing. Kiss me, just kiss me, kiss me, Nefertiti. Just the way you like it, just the way you like it. Kiss me, kiss me.